So let's start our first project, guys. We are going to create this animation and we're going to use the three steps design, animate, sequence. Okay, let's take a new project. So we go to new composition here and let's call it my company. I want to use 1280 by 720 and frame rate 30 and five seconds is largely enough for this project. We click OK to create the composition. Cool. Then you need to import the image. To import, you know very well by now, you right click, say import file and you navigate to where you have downloaded the files or the videos and the image and uh, you can select the image. It will be very nice if you select your own image and uh, change the words while I'm working so you can create something that is valuable for you. I make sure I don't create a composition here because the image size is a bit odd. I will use the composition that I already created. So I'll click import. Here you are. Now you want to drop the image inside the timeline so you can start working. You can click on it and drag it and drop it over here if you like or just drop it in the timeline down. Okay, I will do that. I dropped it in the timeline. Now I'll zoom out using the mouse scroll. You notice the image is huge compared to the composition 1280 by 720. So I need to resize the image. One way to do it is just to come and do like this and then you are in trouble because the image is distorted. The best way to do it in After Effects, I will show you the long way, is to select your image or select your layer for example, right click and go to Transform and you say Fit to Comp or Fit to Comp Width or Fit to Comp Height. To keep it on scale, the best is Fit to Comp Width. If you can remember, the shortcut is Control Alt Shift H, but I usually use a right click. It's a long shortcut. Let's zoom back. You remember this is your magnification radio pop up, so you fit to 100%. To not start moving the image every time by mistake, it's best to lock the image. You have the lock just over here. Lock prevents layers from being edited, that is, moved or even scaled. So I will lock it. Now let's start adding a text. Click on the text tool, look at the character panel. Everything seems fine except the font size maybe. I'm using Arial for the whole course. Please feel free to use any font you like. There will be no problem, you will animate it. So you want to start adding the text. I'll click somewhere, really doesn't matter where, and then I will start writing. The first is graphics design. The font is white, I can't even see it. We're gonna put a background. I need to add more text, so I'll go Control Enter. I'm still in the text tool. Click over here and write the second one, which is Motion Graphics. Control Enter again from the main keyboard, and I can click to write the third one. It is Web Design. I finished adding text. I will go for the selection tool. Now I need to align this text. Okay, so very simply, I'll just put them over here. That's okay, but let's use the align panel. Okay, all these have shortcuts. You will get to know them later. Now I'll select the three layers. Notice how you select. If you want to select from the composition preview over here, you select the first one, you press shift, select the second one, you keep on shift and you select the third one. Good. If you want to select from the layers here, select the first one. You can press shift and select the last one, or you can select the first one, Press Control, second and third, the way you would like. But the shift only works here. Control does not work. Notice control is not working at all. So I will select the three of them. I will align them on the left and then I want to distribute them. Now notice where are the anchor points. So they're going to be distributed according to the anchor points. Here you are. Not bad, that's okay. But I think they are a bit big here. So I'll go to character and take it down, for example, to 50. To create the background, of course, you're going to use a shape layer. Now make sure you deselect everything by pressing F2 and click and drag to create the shape layer. Wow. So we have a very odd color. Let's check the fill first of all. 100% we're happy. Blending is normal and it's a solid color. Cool for now. Maybe we'll come back and reduce the opacity. Let's take the shape layer now, click on it and drag it, put it just above the peak. So it works as a background. Let's uh, change the color. Let's move it over here to see the color. I will use the eyedropper now and pick a color from within the image itself. That will be interesting all the time. 
Okay, I will take this color, fine. And I'll click OK for the color. I can use the selection tool and select the layer and start moving the layer up and down to position it the best way I want. Good. Now, how about getting some transparency on the background? That will be interesting. Let's go to the fill, move the fill over here and put some transparency while I'm previewing. Cool, just like this. Fine. Now, the text is quite good, but you can add a drop shadow. It's very easy. Let's select the layer, right click on it, and you have here layer styles. Immediately, I can put a drop shadow. And I want to go into the details of the drop shadow. I like it, it's okay. Now, for the other two, how about applying the drop shadow simultaneously? Select the first one, press shift, and select the second one. And then right click and go to layer styles and say drop shadow. Here you are. So now we have created our design. That's what we like. Now I select all the layers, press Ctrl A or Command A on the Mac to select all the layers. Notice they have been all selected, of course, except my company because it has been locked. Cool. I will twirl up, they will all twirl up. At this point, we have completed the design. We want to start animating and we'll do that in the next lecture. See you then.